Hello. Hi. Salutations. These are all on the list of acceptable greetings. Not on that list would be sup sugar tits. That will be met with a swift rebuttal in the form of a slap across the face. I guess you could say that conversation would be tailor-made <laughs> because it would be swift. Okay, so um, earlier this week I bought a certain thing I'm going to show you and um, I was going to just open them um, but then I realized, oh wait, I have a podcast and no friends, so I will open these in front of that in the, you know, the this on here. Okay, I, I bought Pokemon cards. You know these four packs? You see these? Look at this. This costs $22. That's a bunch of bullshit, if you ask me. <laughs> so, first one. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's just going to be tragic for the autofocus of this camera. You can see Pokemon, Sun and Moon. All right, let's, let's crack this bad boy open. Oh, some ASMR. Oh, okay. Let's see. I know there's like a special thing you can do. Like you do, uh, you put like the back three cards in the front and then it'll like open the holographic or whatever, uh, last, but I don't, I don't know how to do that. So, um, I'm just going to look at these. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Let's try it. Okay. So you do, oh no, I'm going to fuck it up. Okay. No, no, you do the last three you put them in the front, right? And then that's that's what you're supposed to do? Oh, no, wait, okay. Oh, no, no, put your last four in the front. Okay, put your last four in the front. Then you got the energy in the front here. Okay, steel energy, perfect. Um, great ball, trainer card, no one gives a shit about that. Uh, okay, now we got a, what is, what is this? A passam, passamian? Uh, I don't even, what? <laughs> It's like if a rugby player never got introduced to society and he just lived in the wild. Okay, now we got a trainer card. No, okay. Once again, no one gives a shit. Um, Fomantis. Okay, did, what What the What the actual hell is this? Man, we're just doing great on the focus job here. Um, wow, oh my god, look at that camera work right there. Whew. Fomantis. Then we got Spearow. Um, probably one of the worst bird Pokemons there is. Uh, then we got... Picky Peck, which is, what a great name, honestly, in my opinion. Sandile, I've seen a lot of hate towards Sandile, but I gotta say, personally, big Sandile proponent over here. I'm a big fan. Then we got Rattata, right? Alolan Rattata? He's, yeah, you know, uh, no one really likes him. Then we got Kaz, whatever, what is this called? Kaz, oh no, I can't read it backwards. Cosme, me uh, there's a there's a fly on my finger cosmo um what does this say cosmoum okay and then lastly we got okay this what the fuck what <laughs> i mean it's a dope look, looking card but like taurus really okay great first pack y'all great first pack let's focus up let's focus up we did great we have conquered the pack opening genre here on YouTube already. I can't open this pack. God damn it. Sorry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing great things for our future. You know, if we start Taurus, literally, you know, it can only get better. Because what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Now we go, what is it? The back four in the front. Okay. Let's do one, two, three, four in the front. And now we got... The energy card, perfect. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna put them here. I'm I'm doing a terrible job at this. Okay. This is so shit. Okay, energy card. <laughs> this is so terrible. You know what, okay. Energy card, combuskin, fire chicken. Easily like one of the dumbest models. Um, It's gonna focus, I promise it will. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Me talking about my kid with ADHD in the future. Okay. Uh, trainer, we got... What is... What is this? Pokemon Breeders Nurturing. No one cares about training cards. Uh, Gotharita. Oh my god. AKA that phase everyone went through in middle school. 
Bo what it what the fuck did they stop trying? What is Bowen Sweet? What is it? <laughs> well, it's just a it's it looks like a a dog toy. It looks like one half of a Kong. You know that dog toy? It looks like they cut that in half and then made a plant out of it. Spinnerack. Um, anyone with arachnophobia's worst nightmare, but he's a cartoon, so it's kind of cute. Pond poor. Uh, blue monkey. Diglett. Looking oh so phallic. Easily one of the best arts of him right here, I would say. If he had a school picture, it would be that right there. Then we got Jigglypuff. Everyone knows Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is in the same ranks as Pikachu. You know, where like, even if you don't care about Pokemon, you still know what this is. Then we got a Galarian Darminitan. Oh my god. And is it... It's like a reverse hollow, right? Or shiny? I don't, I don't fucking know what cards are. But it's like reverse hollow, right? Because this part is shiny. And then a normal Alolan Darminitan. The card you just saw, but not shiny. It's... I've been fleeced. This is unbelievable. They... They robbed me out of a shiny. Okay. We're two packs in, folks. I don't... <laughs> How long have I been doing this? Um, we're seven minutes into this. I think we're doing great. I didn't think this was going to take this long. I thought this was going to be like a two-minute endeavor. I apologize. Okay. Back three cards. Back four cards, my bad, in the front. And what do we have? Okay. Um, I don't... I don't actually know what type this is. This... Um, this energy card? I don't know. This dragon? What the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, Rotom Dex. Trainer card. Who gives a shit? How do you say this? Pew, pew, ku, kumuku? Uh, I just butchered the shit out of that. It's like a piece of shit that started growing candy corn out of it, but it's like Christmas themed candy corn, so it's red. Whatever. Uh, trainer card, no one gives a shit. Zubat. Easily one of the um, worst Pokemon. Uh, Carvana. It's just a Piranha Pokemon. It's going to focus, I promise it will. I think, is it, it's like almost there? Carvana. They should have just named one Piranha and been like, you know what? You're still going to buy our pieces of plastic that are overpriced. We can name these whatever we want. Okay. Snubble. Snubble's cute. If you're into underbites. And anger issues. <laughs> so basically, if you're into Garve when he was in elementary school, you're going to love Snubble. Um, what is this? Is this Wingle? Oh my god, it is. Look at that, how arched his wings are. Wingle's dope. I like Wingle. Lillipup. Lillipup's cute. And I feel like that's really all all you can say about Lillipup, to be honest. There's there's nothing else to say. Okay, and then we got a... Oh! Uh, was this a reverse hollow? Stuffle? My man. My man's a certified smiley. Look at that. Look at that. No teeth on that either. That's just an open mouth happiness. Exuberance. And then, uh, whatever, what is this? Stuffle, whatever Stuffle turns into, beware. Beware the bear. I don't know if that's a warning or a title, but that's what it is. That's like if a bear did pink face, right? If a black bear did pink face. <laughs> okay. Man, we're, we're really, are we 10 minutes, or like 9 minutes in? Oh my god. This is going to be legitimately... A fourth of this podcast. One more pack, y'all. We got this. Don't even don't even worry. I still can't open it. Okay, there we go. Also, I know last week it was there was a hum on the podcast. I don't know what happened, but there's this area in my hallway uh, that there's now just a perpetual hum. It's very soft. And now I just yeah, I don't know what to do. I don't think it's ever been there. It just came last week and then it left. There's a joke there that I don't want to tell, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Pack three. 
pack four. We got a water energy card. No one gives a shit. A trainer card. No one gives a shit. Ooh, okay. This is a dope Pokemon. Um, I don't know how to say this name. What is like, ooh, Zwilus? Zwilus? Is that how you say it? It turns into Hydreigon, which is a dope Pokemon. It's essentially the Cerberus of the Pokemon world, if you know, like, mythology shit. The three-headed dog, you know. Uh, you got Relicanth, which is just a dead fish. Uh, all his friends call him Sushi, because he's a dead fish. Okay, it's not, it's not focusing. Which makes sense, because it's, it's dead. So, you know, ghost can't, this is so abysmal. This focusing job that I'm given. Starly, which is just another bird Pokemon. They were like, hey, remember Pidgey? What if we just did that again? Purloin is just a cat with, um, what do you call it? Oh, unnecessary beauty standards. No one, no one can have this body shape. You know, all cats around the world are purring in disgust. Marini. I, what the fuck is it? what? <laughs> Marini is like if a goth girl lived underwater. You know, this is what Ariel almost turned into had she not had direction in her life. Meltan, Meltan's kind of dope. He's just a little steel boy, and I love that for him. Great card art too. Anything cartoony, I'm a fan. I'm a proponent, so I love this. Now we got Carablast. I I don't know why, but I've always hated this guy. Uh, now we got a Reverse Hollow uh, Combuskin. Of course he did, right after I said uh, how much I hate... I mean, love this guy. Um, stupid fucking fire chicken. And then finally, the last card. Oh my god. A Scizor V? Oh my god. We did? Look at that. Last card. It's not that much better than the Taurus, but it's something. I think it was a great one to end on. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this pack opening. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> no, now I actually have to do the podcast. The part that requires... I was going to say skill, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> it requires you to actually restrict yourself. Eventually shut up. Like after 45 minutes, then I have to be quiet. You know, I could go forever. But, you know, eventually I will just have to stop. Um, what's been going on? What's been going on this week? Um, well, I don't know if you guys saw my Discord, but uh, there was a message from Ashwin. Ashwin, I don't know how you pronounce your name. I apologize in advance. But he said, yo, Garv, I saw you on the back of a golf cart. And that is exactly right, because on Thursday and Friday, I was helping um, shoot this show on Amazon that sounds like my involvement's much more than it is. I was an, I'm an extra in this show on Amazon. It's, I don't remember the exact name, but I think it's called The College Tour is like the name of the series. And it's where these people uh, make a video for every, or like an episode for a bunch of colleges uh, to show any prospective students, like what the campus actually looks like. Um, you can look it up. It's, I think the art is here, the college tour, the college tours. I don't remember, but they're doing one for Davis. They already did like five episodes. I think it's up on Amazon. They're doing one for Davis and I got to be an extra in it. So if you watch that, you'll see me just walking around or biking in the background. And, uh, that's why I was in the golf cart because we were zooming around campus doing a bunch of different shots so on thursday i recorded for um an hour 30 minutes and then on friday i recorded for two hours and that was super dope that was an amazing opportunity it was amazing to be a part of and it you know had me interacting with real life people again and man it it it, it helps to talk to people in real life i forgot how much that does for you um, I forget, it's the thing I talked about, you know, um, where I was like, oh, I, I was becoming so like, just upset with everything, um, being by myself and talking to myself all these months. But then, you know, when you talk to those people and you interact with people in real life, man, 
It feels good. I mean, you know, it's, it's really also like tiring. Just, I told my mom this, uh, after I finished recording yesterday, today's Saturday also recording this before Monday morning, which is when the last who knows how many have been recorded. Um, but yes, doing this on Saturday, I'll get into that in a little bit, but yeah, just man, talking to people. Um, I told my mom after Friday, I'm tired. I, I told her, I'm like, I'm tired. And she's like, Oh, why? And I was like, just from like moving. And she was like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like, like physically, like moving my body. I've been sitting in a chair for like a year now. <laughs> and so like actually going and, you know, being physically involved with the world. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, re- excuse me. Sorry. It was refreshing. I'm, I'm not at that age yet where I just talk through burps. Shout out John Mulaney, who's back by the way. Went to rehab. Now he's back. But that's a joke of his. He, you know, he says, you know, I'm in that gross part of my life where I just talk through burps. I'm not there yet. Okay. I'm, uh, I'll work up to it. But if you watch past podcasts, I've done that already many a time. So, you know, here I am. My speech and my joints are that of a mid thirties man. So making great progress, achieving goals well in advance. But when we were shooting this, um, right before I left for the first day, uh, they had emailed, you know, if you have a bike, bring it. And I was like, oh, I got it. I got one of those. So I brought my bike, but I wanted to test because it's been well over a year, um, probably 13, 14 months, whatever, since I've ridden my bike. And so I wanted to test, hey, does this thing still work? So before I, I left to go to the shoot, I went out to like a parking lot and just tried riding my bike and I was like, okay, it works, but it's, it's an extremely labored effort that I'm observing that I'm, you know, putting in here. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm just that out of shape. But then I was like, no, knowing what I know about bikes, it's probably that the tires are flat, right? Like it feels sluggish, not because of my leg muscles, but because I think the rubber around those two circles has worn down or not worn down, but become deflated. And so I had a hunch my tire pressure was low. And so, you know, I bike to the rendezvous that they had told us. And that was the worst, the the most physically exerting thing I've done. Uh, probably ever. (laughs) And I'm a professional mountain climber, let me remind you, but I biked there and I think it was a combination of things. I think it's because I was wearing a mask and I haven't worked out in months and also the tires were flat. All three of those just royally screwed me because I was easily going probably a mile per hour if that fast, I was going so slow. I think I passed this girl and then she passed me. Like she was just walking faster than I was biking. It wasn't even like, it was like I was dragging a bike along, but from on top of the bike, you know, like walking with a bike would have been faster than whatever the fuck I was doing. (laughs) And so I got to the, you know, the rendezvous and I told, I was there with uh, Dawson. The other students there were Dawson um, Juliet and Danielle, I told them, uh, oh yeah, I got my bike in case we need it for the shoot. And they're like, oh, that's great. And I was like, yeah, I think my tires are just fucked because that was the worst thing I've done ever. And I did ecstasy last week. I couldn't even get through that punchline without like <laughs> my voice trembling. Uh, because I was like, oh God, are you going to pronounce ecstasy wrong? And that kind of ruins the bit, and then I just uh, tumbled through that punchline, and it fucked up, and here I'm acknowledging it, because it didn't work, but I was like, oh yeah, my tires are fucked, like, I haven't ridden that thing in a year, Um, similar to them, or similar to me, I think the quarantine has just 
and the pandemic has just deflated them. Uh, and so I went to get my bike and I was, you know, uh, walking along Danielle rolling my bike and she was like, Oh, I don't, it doesn't look like your tires are too flat. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that's maybe it's just in my head. Maybe I am just that out of shape. <laughs> and so, um, we were recording and then Juliet was taking some videos and she posted the videos online and I watched the videos and I took a screenshot from one of the videos and here it is. <laughs> this is me on top of the bike. Uh, yeah, as you can see, tires, very fucking flat. <laughs> so flat. Oh my God. I, I'm surprised I didn't like break my bike because uh, I was pretty much just riding on the metal of the wheels, like the frame of the wheels, not the actual like wheels of the wheels, you know? And I was riding that thing like around the dorms and then all the way from Tercero, if you know the campus, I rode that from Tercero to um, like Silec and then from Silec to the MU. And then, you know, I was talking to the other students and they were like, oh yeah, like you, know, you should visit the bike bar. And I was like, wait, are they open? Like, I know the campus is like pretty much barren as shit. So Anything that's open, I'm just surprised. Like, all the cafes are closed and whatnot. All the utilities, I guess. And so, I just assumed the bike barn fell under that same kind of thing. You know, like, I, if everything else is closed, why would the bike barn be open? Like, the only thing that's open? Um, but in the city of bikes, it makes sense. You gotta have your plug. Because um, this town is itching for some of that bike. And so uh, Dawson was like, oh, yeah, I think it's open. So I started riding my bike back to my apartment. But then I was like, oh, man, this is so fucking difficult. So I was like, okay, let's just check the hours online. Do they say the bike binds open? Uh, if it does, I'll just go over there, try to get this figured out. And if they're not open, then uh, whatever. I'll. It's going to suck. It's worth a shot. Like, the payoff's going to be huge if they are actually open. So I go to the bike barn because it said their hours were like 10 to 4, I believe. And at this point, it was 2.59. And so I go over to the bike barn and the windows o or the door's open and there's a bell and it says ring for assistance. And I was like, okay. Ding. And a gentleman emerges from the back. <laughs> Me at a gay orgy. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, a gentleman emerges from the back and he says, yeah, how can I help you? I was like, well, I haven't ridden my bike in like a year. He's like, yeah, I can tell. Look at you. I was like, easy, pal. Okay. I'm wearing jeans. You can't even see my legs. He was like, yeah, but just the frame of them looks, eh, you know? Um, <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, I haven't ridden this bike in a year. Can you just make sure like everything's good with it? I know the tire pressure is low. At this point, I'm not like entirely convinced because I didn't see the picture yet. I was just, you know, I had this hunch. And so I, I like threw it in there. I was like, I think the tire pressure is low, but can you check the whole thing? Just make sure. Because <laughs> it was such a labored event to get from my apartment to the campus that I assumed, oh, just this bike is fucked. Because whatever, you know, the gauntlet it just put me through physically, there's no way more things aren't fucked up with it. So I was like, yeah, just give it a give it a once over, just a through and through, uh, let your boy know what's up. So he puts it up there. He mounts it, um, you know, to the wall, just like at that gay orgy. And he, you know, spins the wheels, <laughs> uh, just like it. Okay. Sorry. And he, he starts, you know, spin the wheels, a rim job, if you will. Anyways, <laughs> damn it. And he's like, oh yeah, no, it looks like it's fine. I'm just going to go ahead, oil up your back tires. And yeah, like you said, I think it's just air pressure. I was like, huh, okay. Air pressure really put me through that, huh? God damn it. Really do be <laughs> smallest of things. And then I don't really know how bikes work, right? I've already stated this. So he's like, yeah, you can just go outside. We have the air pressure thing. I was like, oh yeah, just that over there. And I pointed... I pointed kind of in a general direction, but I pointed at this blue thing. Um, it essentially looks like it was uh, siphoned off of a 
child's playground because it's these just blue metal bars with tools hanging off of it. And I just kind of pointed in that general direction. I was like, oh yeah, just at the station, right? And he was like, uh, yep, you know, just outside. I could tell I tripped up a little bit, but I didn't quite get it. So I take my bike outside and I'm like, you idiot. That, <laughs> that doesn't fill up air. That's just for like, you know, wrenches and anything you need. Uh, but then I see on the left side of the building, there's this little red tube coming out of it. Kind of like at the, I will stop now, sorry. Uh, but there's this little red tube coming out uh, with a metal head. And I'm like, oh, I guess this is my stop. So I put my bike there and I realize I have no idea how this works. Like, <laughs> how is there just a tube with a metal head? Like, how is there no, like, valve or anything? Like, don't you have to, like, turn the air on, you know? <laughs> so um, I unscrew the cap on my bike tire and I just say, okay, like, this should work, right? This this is all that's provided, this tube, and then my tire. So with all these parts, I should have everything I need, right? So I should just, like, have, be able to proceed with the ceremony of filling a tire's uh, with air. And so I take it, and I apply the metal head to the opening, and it goes, you know, real loud. And it starts filling my tire. Actually, it doesn't even start. It, similar to me at the gay orgy, it just uh, starts and finishes instantly. And my tires were real firm, like sturdy, if you will. You know, real strapping wheels. Um, them shits got filled quick. It was like a Twinkie factory in there, you know, just p -p -p pumping through those. I'm switching my analogy now to more family friendly. So we're going to talk about a Twinkie factory. <laughs> Another place where you fill cake with cream. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I did it. So I, I re that's when I realized, oh, the head of this metal thing, all you do is when you apply pressure, it opens up the tube and then the air just flows through. And so I was like, oh, I got this. Screw that back on, unscrew the front wheel. And then boom, firm as hell. And then I get on my bike and oh my God, it was like the streets were made of marble, man. It was so smooth riding that bike after that. I was like, oh my God, I knew I wasn't weak. Look at me. I'm like easily, you know, super strong. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a strapping sturdy guy. Uh, no, I'm not, but there's no way, you know, it was so difficult because of my lack of leg muscles. Uh, my legs, they look like they belong to a runner's, but then, like, they don't actually run. I'm saying I have skinny legs, but without utility, which is a real shame. Uh, <laughs> I have a runner's legs. Um, no, I don't have anything there. I, know. <laughs> uh, I, ha I, do, I did have a joke, but it's, like, probably extremely insensitive, so I'm not going to make it. Um so yeah, I have real skinny legs, but n not not utilitarian in any in any shape or form. Um, they're all for show. They're just for display, you know. Um, but they probably run a ten minute mile, <laughs> like probably um, if things went well, if conditions were ideal. But yeah, no, I drove away into the sunset on my bike, and oh my god, so smooth. The tires were entirely the problem. And, um, I'm so glad I did that because now, you know, I'm very comfortable taking my bike out and I took it out the next day when I went for the Friday shoot and, um, I biked there, no biggie, no biggie. And then I finish and just that, yeah, like I said earlier, just the lack of a sedentary lifestyle or, you know, just that polar opposite of the sedentary lifestyle I've been living for the past, you know, 400 days or so, um, I think just tired out this system along with being exposed to the natural sunlight because I got back here. And first of all, that morning, I, I kind of did to my kind of did it to myself that morning, uh, for breakfast, I ate two pop tarts and I had a glass of milk. So, <laughs> um, I wasn't really operating on much fuel anyways, but you know, I got back to my apartment after, you know, this two hour shoot and then like 
biking around for 30 minutes or whatever. And I took a fat nap. I took such a big nap. And then I woke up from the nap. Uh, I called my mom, talked for like an hour and a half, as we do. And then um, I was like, well, I got to eat something. You know, I can't just be this way. So I ate nine Chips Ahoy cookies. <laughs> and then I realized, oh my God, what the fuck? I've only eaten sugar today. And um, this isn't healthy. So uh, natural next step, I went to Jack in the Box. <laughs> yeah, the problem was, oh, I haven't eaten healthy today. So what did, it, what did I remedy that problem with? Yeah, the decision to go to fucking Jack in the Box. <laughs> so at this point in the day, you know, it's 10... What is it? Uh, 1057. Yeah, 1057. I had arrived at Jack in the Box and there was a line that had, you know, kind of, it was given Jack in the Box the old reach around, which, you know, if you're getting a reach around at a Jack in the Box, that's like pretty much how you get STDs, I'm, I think. That's what I've heard. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But, I, you know, I'm in this wraparound of cars and I know Jack in the Box is notoriously slow they uh they operate at the uh the old tortoise pace they um you know it's it's not about what is it what is the whole point of tortoise and the hare like slow and steady wins the race the problem is they're slow and just not steady so <laughs> it's they're not even in the race jack in the box they're just like oh yeah we get there's a race happening that's cool over there. We're not going to participate though. And so, you know, they just have their, their food truck, like outside the arena where the race is being held. Um, but somehow they're still like in the leaderboards for the race. And they're like, they're not even competing. They're like, yeah, we just like to include them in the talk, you know, it makes them feel good. And so I'm in this line. Things are fairly normal for 1057. But because they're notoriously slow, I, I had marked that time in my head mentally, made a marker. 10.57, that's when I got here. Let's see how long, at this point, there's probably six, seven cars in line. Let's see how long it takes six, seven cars to get through this drive through So, you know, I'm, I'm witnessing the first two cars. It's like a 10 to 15 minute average. And I'm like, okay, so we'll be here about an hour. Okay. Um, I go around. Uh, to the bend where the speaker is and the lady says hello I said hi and she said hi and I was like oh usually they try to like you know like offer you like oh would you like to try our new right now they have the popcorn chicken stuff going on would you like to try our new popcorn chicken and then you always say uh no thanks um I'm good and they're like okay so what would you like to order Usually they, they hit you with like a order whenever you're ready. And so I just thought it was odd that she was just saying hi and wasn't hitting me with the, the classic intro. It was like if you're watching Spongebob Squarepants, but you never hear the intro song and then the bubbles fly in the air. It just feels wrong, right? Like, am I missing something? That was a weak analogy. It's like if you're watching a Star Wars movie, you know, and they don't have... The opening, you know, da, 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 and then, you know, the rolling credits. Um, and so I was like, this is kind of weird, right? This intro is not like other intros. It's a quirky intro. <laughs> this intro is not like other intros. This drive through is not like McDonald's. It's significantly worse. But I'm in this drive through and she's like, hi. I'm like, hello. Um, salutations. Sup, sugar tits. And she's like, fucking leave. <laughs> Uh, no, I was like, hi. And she's like, hi. I said, oh, okay, so I'll take one popcorn chicken thing. And she's like, what was that? I said, oh, I'll, t I'll take the popcorn chicken box. Because, you know, I'm trying to get my protein for the day. And she said, what was that? I was like, oh, it's the you guys carry the this, like, popcorn chicken are you getting this mixed up with something else? Because there's nothing else on the menu that's even like it. So am I, am I, is that what's happening? And she's like, I can't hear you. I was like, oh. So I start, you know, using my outside voice. I say, uh, one popcorn chicken, please. 
And she's like, yeah, nope. Nope, you're making noise, but nothing still. I was like, okay. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> what do we do now? Uh, I can't go any closer because, you know, there's a there's a Benz in front of me. I don't want to get bender on the Benz. It's a bad time. And so I just keep, you know, trying to say, hi, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And um, she's like, you know what? I think it's my headset. I can barely hear you. I think it's my headset. And in my head, I'm like, it's not your headset. I'm just like, we're, I'm at such an awkward distance from the speaker. It's like where I'm supposed to be versus where I am. We're like the two sides of a right triangle. And the distance for me to get to that point is like the hypotenuse. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just this distance I need to cover. And then we'll be in the sweet spot. You and I, we're going to be in this together. Totally. And I was just like, I, I just don't... I don't think I'm close enough yet. And she's like, yeah, I think it's my headset. I was like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not, no, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, you're there and you're ready for me. I just don't know if I have the strength and the room to meet you there. We're just a hypotenuse away. But she goes and gets a new headset and then she comes back. She's like, hello. And I'm like, Hi. She's like, yep, still bad. And I was like, I know, because <laughs> it's not you, it's me. It's it's me, baby, it's me. <laughs> but um, finally, it gets slightly better. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm just not close enough. And she's like, oh, why didn't you just say, I was like, fucking damn it. <laughs> she's like, oh, no problem. You want to just maybe give this um, a couple minutes? I was like, yeah, totally. And so some cars go through and then I get there and I'm like, hello, no response. <laughs> but then like three minutes later, she's like, okay, can you hear me? I'm like, yes. Can you hear me? And she's like, yeah, we are so good. And I was like, look at us vibing, nothing but straight vibes, 11 PM, <laughs> Jack in the box drive through and kids, this is how I met your mother. <laughs> no. Um, so I order, you know, my protein fused meal of, Popcorn chicken, two tacos, a slice of cheesecake, and a large vanilla shake. <laughs> and oh, I forgot the best part of the fucking story. Before I pull up, you know, complete the trek of the hypotenuse, um, as I'm getting there, this whole time there's a car in the parking lot. And the, you know, when you lock your car and it goes beep or something like that, um, it kept doing that. It kept, you know, beeping. And right as I pull up to order, right as I complete the hypotenuse, you know, trek, um, the car's alarms just start blaring. It's just, the horn is just, and I'm like, look at us, you know, in downtown Davis, horny, look at the two of us, um, classic, classic Friday night, Davis downtown, look at us, <laughs> horny individuals, um, but I was like, fucking, of course, God damn it. Now I'm gonna, <laughs> she's still not going to hear me because that thing went off. Uh, but then I pull up, you know, and I'm finally at the window and I'm just salivating, you know, at the mouth because, uh, you know, I've only eaten two Pop-Tarts, nine chips Ahoy at this point. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to sinking down these chompers on some food. But then right then these two girls start playing in the street in front of me with a football. And I was like, oh, this is a bad look. Start wiping my face. You know? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 I'm. I just, I just want popcorn chicken. Um, but no, I finally get the popcorn chicken and the lady tells me because I ordered the cheesecake. She's like, um, unfortunately we don't have any silverware available. And I was like, if you thought I came to Jack in the Box for the silverware, you are unfortunately mistaken. Uh, never really, never really, uh, have known you guys to be the silverware plug. And also, it's 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 plasticware, really. Let's not lie to ourselves here. Make this seem like it's something it's not. It's it's plasticware. Um, if you really think about it, they're just reshaped Pokemon cards, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no problem. I I have forks at home. <laughs> and um, then I pull out. I get back home. And, um, I eat my Jack in the Box and I departed the Jack in the Box at 1141. So if you do the math, ding, 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 that was 44 minutes in that drive-thru. 
but yeah, I get, you know, back to my apartment, like 11 or like pretty much midnight, I guess at this point I eat and then I start watching Bojack Horseman, which I've been rewatching because I love that show. And I like passed out on my bed at like one thirty, and I woke up at 11.30 a.m., so like 10 hours later, and all my lights were on because I had left them on, you know? Or not even that I left them on, it's just I had never turned them off. And I felt just just like such a shitty person, you know? Like, this is, stuff like this has happened before, but like, I don't know why, but this, this low like hit me on another level. And so, I just like, I was like, I need to change. This is fucking stupid. Um, and I also, I, in BoJack, um, there was the part where Todd says, you know, BoJack, you have to stop, like, hiding behind, you know, making your problems seem like they're their own thing. Everything that is wrong with you is you. And then he says, fuck, man, I, I don't know what else to say. And I think when I woke up at 1130, I kind of just, in my head, was like, fuck, man. What else is there to say? You're just, you're just fucking up. And so I just started, you know, doing things to make myself, I think, feel accomplished or feel better. And so I finally worked out because I've been saying I want to work out for a couple of weeks now, but I, I never got the gumption or the what, whatever it is, you know, never got the, the actual push to do it. But I don't know, I had like a change of mindset this past week and just this, this low I reached, I think is kind of pushed me in a certain direction. So, you know, today I worked out, um, I cleaned my entire apartment, which felt amazing. I vacuumed everything, cleaned the toilet, cleaned the sinks, cleaned the bathtub. I dusted the entire place. Um, I cleaned all the mirrors in this place with like glass cleaner. Um, you know, I ate two apples and a banana. If there's any imagery that's on you. <laughs> I'm not thinking anything. I just am saying I ate two round objects and a rather phallic one. Um, so I, ate, I ate a bunch of fruit. No, I was going to like make myself a pizza and drink soda, but then I was like, fuck that. And I ate like chicken and rice and, you know, I showered. I like cut my nails. I read chapters of my book. I journaled. I fucking... Yeah, I journaled after not, you know, journaling for like seven months. It's something I've been trying to, I want to get back and do, but I haven't. Uh, I've been drinking a shit ton of water. And it's just like all these things that um, I've been doing again to like try to make myself feel better. And after I did all of that, I I realized um, like my whole mindset changed, you know, like I felt, I don't want to jump the gun and say this. So I'm saying this with an asterisk, but I, I felt happy. And I, that's the thing. I don't, I don't really know if I feel confident saying that. I don't know if it comes from a fear of thinking that something might change or what, but I felt happy and it wasn't in a fleeting sense. It was like in a sustainable sense. And so I think, you know, you got to have a little rain before you have your rainbow. So I think I reached a stormy low, <laughs> which is also what a certain former president performed with someone. Okay, stormy low. God damn it. Stormy Daniels. Damn it. Um, but yeah, I feel happy. I think. Um and I'm, I'm looking forward to making some good progress. And, um, yeah, I just noticed, like, the way I've been thinking about things this whole day has just been different, you know? I listen to music the entire day, too. Um, and I don't know. I feel good. And, you know, I was stuck in a Jack in the Box drive through for 44 minutes. So, if you want to go get Jack in the Box. This is the perfect listen if you get stuck. But by now, you should have already gotten your food. So, I'm happy. 
I'll see if I can keep it up. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Expect some videos, or a video at least. And yeah, see you next week. Bye.